everybody! It's time for another crochet quick fix. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we'll stitch it up together. Today we're going to make this cute little candy corn drawstring treat sack. I'm using 100% acrylic yarn. It's a size 4 medium weight. You want around 20 grams, I should say 20 yards or 5 grams of yellow, 40 yards or 10 grams of orange, and about 65 yards or 15 grams of white. You might want a little extra too if you're going to make your own cord. I just braided the three colors together. You can also use ribbon or additional cording if you've got that lying around for the drawstring. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook is a 5 millimeter, also known as an H or an 8 in the US, a size 6 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin down at the bottom of our little sack, so you want to take your yellow yarn and we're going to start with a cinch circle. Once you've chained one to secure your circle, you want to work eight single crochet into your cinch circle. Be sure to work over top of your short tail so you can cinch your circle shut. Once you have eight single crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab your short tail, pull it nice and tight to cinch up your circle, and if you need to use a stitch marker to keep track of the beginnings or endings of your rounds as we work, because we're working in the round here, then feel free to take out a stitch marker and either add it to the top of your last stitch or when you work the first stitch of round two, you can add it to the top of your first stitch of each row. You wanna move it as you go, or you can count like I'm going to. The first thing we're going to do is increase. So we're going to go from a stitch count of 8 to a, to a stitch count of 12. So we're going to work directly into that first stitch from row 1 and it's always a little bit tight. So get your hook in there. I'm going to work over top of my short tail but of course you can put yours to the back and weave it in later if you like. We're going to begin with two single crochet worked into that first stitch. We're going to work one single crochet into the next stitch and then we're going to repeat that little pattern three more times. So two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the stitch after that, and we'll go from eight to twelve. At the end of row two you'll have twelve stitches all the way around. For row three we're just going to single crochet into each stitch. So single crochet once into each of those twelve stitches. At the end of row 3, we'll still have 12 stitches. We're going to increase again now, and we're going to go from 12 to 16. The pattern that you're going to repeat four times in total in row 4 is two single crochet into the first stitch of row 4, and single crochet each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one. Two, one, one. You're going to repeat that four times in total. That'll bring you up to 16 stitches. At the end of row 4, you'll have 16 stitches. For row 5, you're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So row 5, single crochet into each stitch, you'll still have 16 stitches. At the end of row 5, you should still have 16 stitches. We're going to increase in row 6. And the new pattern, which you're going to repeat 4 times in total, is 2 single crochet into the first stitch and single crochet once into each of the next three stitches. Repeat that four times in total and you'll have 20 stitches all the way around. At the end of row six, you'll be up to 20 stitches all the way around. And for row seven and our last row of yellow, you're just going to single crochet into each stitch. So you'll still have 20 stitches at the end of row seven. At the end of row seven, you should still have 20 stitches. And now we just want to even up that last row of yellow to be in alignment with where row one turns into row two. See that little bump there? We want to even up our stitches. So we're just going to single crochet in each stitch until our last stitch is a nice straight line up from that spot. So this isn't going to change your stitch count. And I think I'm going to do one more. But it is going to just even up the top so that you have um, seven even rows all the way around. 
Once your last stitch lines up with that little bump, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. You don't need very much tail. You can weave your tail in if you want or leave it out, work over top of it, or worry about weaving it in later. Now it's a little easier to weave it in now before because this becomes sort of a tight spot. So if you do want to weave it in, go ahead and do that now or work over top of it like I'm going to. We're going to get into the orange section now of our little candy corn. So grab your orange yarn. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn in the same place that we fastened off our yellow. So if you pull up on that little that little short tail there, you'll see the space, the little hole. Put your hook right in there and join with a slip stitch. Now this stitch isn't going to count. We're actually going to use it as a visual marker because we're going to skip over top of it when we get back around, but I'll show you when we get there. We're going to begin row eight as an increase row. We're going to go from 20 stitches in total up to 24. So we're going to do four repeats of this little pattern. And that pattern is two single crochet into the first stitch. And I'm going to work over top of both of my short tails here. So two single crochet into the first stitch and single crochet once into each of the next four stitches. So two, one, 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 one. You're going to repeat that four times in total and I'll see you at the end of this row. When you get back around to the beginning, the last stitch of your last set will be into what was the slip stitch of the previous row. We joined our yarn in that little area there, but we're going to skip over top of it. Find the top of the first single crochet you made, which is this little stitch right here. And that's where you're going to work the first stitch of row nine. Row nine is nice and simple. You're just going to single crochet into every single stitch all the way around. You'll still have 24 stitches. And now we've established our orange section. At the end of row nine, you should still have 24 stitches. For row 10, we're going to increase again. So we're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch of the set. And then a single crochet into each of the next five stitches. So I'm sure you're seeing the pattern developing so far. So every other row, we just single crochet regularly and the rows in between when we increase the little number, the number of stitches in between two single crochet into the same stitch increases by one. So that's the idea. We want to gradually increase the size of our little treat bag so that it becomes conical shaped like a little candy corn. You're going to repeat that pattern of two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next five stitches, four times in total, and we will be up to 28 stitches at the end of round 10. At the end of row 10, you should have 28 stitches all the way around. Row 11 is a single crochet row, so all we're going to do is single crochet into each stitch. You'll still have 28 stitches at the end of row 11. At the end of row 11, you should still have 28 stitches all the way around. Row 12, we're increasing again. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch of the set. And then a single crochet into each of the next six stitches. Repeat that four times in total and we'll be up to 32 stitches all the way around. At the end of row 12, you should have 32 stitches. Row 13 and the last row of orange is just a row of single crochet. So single crochet once into each stitch all the way around. You'll still have 32 stitches. At the end of row 13, you'll still have 32 stitches, but we want to even up the top now so that we have an even six rows all the way around. If you can tell, you've probably, your rows stop a bit further back every single time you work an increase. So we want to single crochet into the next four stitches. This isn't going to change your stitch count, but it's just going to even up all those rows so that you're in alignment with where you joined your yarn and you've got six even rows of orange all the way around. Slip stitch into the next stitch. Fasten off. You don't need much tail. Once again, you can weave this in now or you can work over top of it as we add our white. Our last section. We're going to take our white yarn Make a slip knot, 
and we're going to join it exactly the same way we did the orange section. So we're going to pick up our little conical shape here, find where we fastened off, put our hook right in there, join with a slip stitch, and that slip stitch is going to be skipped. We're going to use it as a marker so that we, when we get all the way back around to the beginning, we skip over top of it. So we are still increasing for row 14. I'm going to work over top of both my short tails. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch. And a single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next seven. You're going to do that four times in total and we'll be up to 36 stitches all the way around. When you get around to the end of row 14, your last stitch will be worked into the slip stitch that finished off the row of orange. And then remember we're skipping over that join and you're going to find the first the top of the first stitch you made which is this little one here it kind of looks like it's pointing down a little bit that's where you're going to work the first stitch of row 15. row 15 is just a row of single crochet so get your hook in there and single crochet into each stitch all the way around you'll still have 36 stitches at the end of row 15. At the end of row 15, you should still have 36 stitches. We have one more row of increase to do. So row 16, we're going to continue our increasing. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then a single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. You're going to repeat that four times in total, and we'll have 40 stitches at the end of row 16. At the end of row 16, you should have 40 stitches. That's it for the increasing. For rows 17 through 21, we're just going to single crochet. So you're just gonna single crochet in each stitch all the way around for rows 17 through 21. You'll still have 40 stitches at the end of row 21. And I'll see you when we get there. At the end of row 21, you should have 40 stitches. Just continue to single crochet until your last stitch lines up with where you joined your yarn. So we have nice even rows of white all the way around. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. That kind of closes off row 21. And now we want to add the drawstring row. So we're going to use the half double crochet stitch now. We're going to chain one to begin row 22. Pull up on your stitch. You can sort of see that space. That's where you just slip stitched into. You're going to work your first half double crochet right into that same stitch. So half double crochet into the same place that you just chained one out of. Half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Chain one, skip a stitch, and half double crochet into the next three stitches. So that little chain one, skip one, starts sort of creates a little space for our drawstring to run through. We want a half double crochet into the next three stitches, chain one, skip one, and half double crochet into the next three stitches. You'll have 10 spaces all the way around by the time you get to the end of row 22, and I will catch up with you there. When you get right back round to the beginning, work your last three half double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch. You'll also see that little false stitch. This is the something we get when we work around and around in circles. It doesn't really count, so you're going to skip it. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet you made, and you should have ten nice little drawstring spaces all the way around. You can fasten off. And then grab your yarn needle and you can weave that little tail in back and forth underneath some of the stitches of that last row. All that's left to do now is weave our drawstring through our little drawstring spaces. So I like the seam, small as it is, to be at the back. So I find the space that's directly above it and I go two to the side, push my drawstring in through the first hole 
out through the second, in and out, in and out, all the way around. And there you go, we're all done. You can cinch it up, fill it full of treats. It still looks like a cute little candy corn. These make great little goodie bags for Halloween parties or any kind of party that happens around the Halloween season. And if you don't get that many trick-or-treaters at the door, then maybe consider making a little something extra special for the ones that brave the cool weather and come up to your door and uh, stuff this full of treats and put that in their treat bag. A lovely little surprise on Halloween. We hope you enjoyed making this candy corn drawstring sack with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. Bye! Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.